In the early 2000s, a subdivision of EA Sports was made called EA Sports. This division emphasized fast, arcadey types of games. Games from basketball to football to snowboarding. I'm on a quest to review every single one. If you want to see me cover your favorite one, let me know in the comments, as long as it's an EA Sports big title. Today, we look at SSX. If you turn the logo upside down, it looks like a censored version of the word ass, which makes me chuckle more than it should, admittedly. <laughs> I never really played this. I mean, I kind of did play it, but that was like 20 years ago when I was seven. Safe to say I don't remember a whole lot, so I have a fresh take on the whole series. SSX has a multitude of characters to pick from. These are some neat character designs, but none of them ever really show off any sort of personality. In loading screens, you can learn more about them and even learn some of the most useless stuff ever, like characters blood type, like why? Has anyone ever picked someone based on their blood type? Am I snowboarding with this dude or am I doing a damn blood transfusion? Well, I guess I can't talk because I changed the speed unit to miles per hour because... Anyway, on to what matters. The main mode is World Circuit, and once you pick your character, you head on into the tutorial. Now, let's talk about the controls. How about some nice, fat cock turns? All you gotta do is use that turning control. Moving takes some time to get used to because it's not as precise as you think it'd be. I'm constantly nudging everywhere as opposed to just smoothly veering left and right. Holding the jump button, you load up for a big jump like so many other games, but once you do this, you can't move. Instead, the left stick in this case determines the direction you spin and or flip in. This works, but coming from a Tony Hawk background, it's a little difficult to get used to. The buns on the top determine grabs so you can mix and match and switch between different grabs on the fly. Combine that with the spins and flips and you'll be looking like the GameCube intro when you hold the A button. It's super satisfying when you get big air and just start going ape shit. The big selling point is to pull off these crazy tricks, and SSX does this in a flashy yet simple way, which is how it should be. The mechanic that's not done well in my opinion is grinding. The amount of accuracy you need to grind on rails is the same percentage as hand sanitizer killing all germs. It's hard to get on these rails, man. There's no button press, you just ride up to the rail or you can jump. But I mentioned before, the controls for jumping limit your movement, so it's counterintuitive. This is number one bullshit. The EA Skate series has a similar way of grinding, but the thing is you aren't traveling at freaking Mach 5 speeds like you are in SSX. That's why Tony Hawk has a grind button, because it's asking a lot of the player to be this accurate, especially for a pick up and play game. But back to the world circuit. This mode has two events race events and show off events. And you do these events in seven different courses. The courses in this game are the game's biggest strength by far. No two courses look the same and each one of them is filled with vibrant colors and great looking settings. Aloha Ice Sham starts off up atop an icy mountain and as you go lower and lower, you realize the stage around you is melting and you finish the level riding on some ice blocks. Tokyo Megaplex is by far my favorite. You're essentially in some Japanese pinball machine. There are so many alternative routes and shortcuts. As a matter of fact, all of the courses have shortcuts. All levels have these little glass signs that you can break through like Stone Cold Steve Austin making his entrance at Survivor Series 1997. And there are ones that are a little bit more hidden. The courses overall are beautiful. Race events are, well, races. These are broken down into two qualifying events where you need third place or higher. And if you get to the final race, then that's where first place is where the gold is. So one of the things you might be asking yourself when doing a race is why on earth would you do tricks when it just slow you down? Well, with each trick you do, you earn boost, which is represented by those little lifesaver candies on the right side here. So it's an interesting game here of trick to boost or just skip past these ramps. You can see the AI skipping ramps at times as well. Don't fucking run away from me! The show off events is just scoring points in a course. There are these giant snowflakes on the course, and I'm not talking about overly sensitive people, I'm talking about these colored snowflakes. I'm offended. These are scattered across the stage, and they are multipliers of times two, times three, and times five, respectively. These snowflakes can actually be helpful for the races because they can be positioned in a place that could lead to shortcuts. The times five ones are located in some insane spots, and most of them involve grinding, which we already established is way too difficult to do consistently. 
After earning medals, you can level up your guy, unlock new clothes, boards, and also up your stats. And unlock new characters. Upgrading your guy is vital because you'll laugh at how ineffective you were when you started out. I have a big complaint about one major thing. SSX is a game of trial and error. You see this ramp? I'm gonna go jump off it. La 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 la. Oh no. I'm gonna crash into the ceiling. There's no way I could have known that unless I played the level 4,861 times. Obviously I'm messing around and having a mastery of the course is by no means a bad thing. I don't, nor should I, get masterful runs on my first attempt. I love experimenting with the courses, but here's my problem. There's no restart option why? So if you're doing one of these races, you have to race the same course three times because remember, you have to qualify twice. But if you lose the third time, you have to start all over from the first qualifying race again. Imagine losing a race like this. See you, chump. No! If you immediately mess up, your instincts would tell you to restart the mission, but you can't. So here are your options. One, quit, which sends you to the main menu. Two, stand around like a crackhead outside of 7-Eleven until time runs out. Or three, finish the run with a most likely shit score. What kind of 1990s ass bullshit is this? This literally prevented me from getting the gold medals because I just don't want to put up with this nonsense. I watch reviews of this game and read reviews too and no one brings this up. Like, am I missing something here? The concept of restarting was not a new one. I could do it in frickin' Crash Bandicoot 3. I mean, this was obviously done because SSX is a game with so little content that they had to make the game artificially longer somehow. Well, I'd rather your game be two hours long and enjoyable than four hours long and frustrating at times. Overall, SSX is fun with its sense of style and courses, but heavily flawed with controls that can hinder you doing the cool things that the game is about, lack of content, and boneheaded lack of a restart option in the game that wants you to master each course by playing it over and over again. I don't like the game nearly as much as the internet does. And that's interesting because this is the first time on YouTube that I've gone against popular opinion. Hey man, if you guys hate me, just know that you'll never hate me as much as the YouTube algorithm does. God damn. Let's hope the sequel's better. SSX Tricky is the follow-up to SSX. Yeah, no shit. And right off the bat, you notice the emphasis on characters in this one, and it pays off. The character select screen is much better this time around, with each character doing their thing. They stand out more and do more besides just say some generic stuff when they land a trick. The useless information for the characters comes back. Now we even have interviews and a backstory? Mac is by far the youngest rider on a tour at age 15. What? 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 The controls have been very much improved from the first game. Moving around is so much easier. When you load up for a jump, you're free to move around now, which is very welcomed. You can still load up for spins, but now you do it with the D-pad, which is A-OK -okay with me. Grinding has been so much improved. You no longer need to calculate freaking Einstein coefficients in order to grind a rail. The game is a little bit more forgiving this time around, which I think it should be considering grinding is much more prevalent this time around. There are still some issues with it though. Firstly, sometimes I'm just ejected up off rails when I try and grind them. And secondly, balancing on the rail could be pretty difficult. When I'm grinding on straight rails, it's fine. But when I'm on rails that are zigzagging all around, it's hard to tell which way I should balance the board. Overall though, the controls are way better than the first game. World Circuit Mode returns again with the same two events being race and show off. You know what else returns? The courses from the first SSX game. That's cool with me. The courses in the first game were all really great. It just sucks though when you realize that only two courses are new and the rest are from the first game, albeit with some changes to them. The strength of the first game, in my opinion, was the courses. Yes, adding speed pathways and air rails on Tokyo Megaplex is awesome, but I want new stuff though. Races still have that frantic feel with so many alternative routes and shortcuts. Now that you can actually grind reliably, these are super satisfying to pull off. And if you boost while grinding, your speed shoots up tremendously. Oh, 
Speaking of boost, the lifesavers are back, y'all. You still earn boost by landing tricks, but now when you fill up the meter, different samples of Tricky by Run DMC start playing. You know the song. Here, let me play it for you. This beat is my recital. Aw, oh, shit. Well, after playing this game for so many hours, I can indeed confirm that it is tricky to rock a rhyme that's right on time. If you follow me on Twitter, you could have got that joke a week ago. But seriously, when you hear these samples, that means now you have access to the new Uber tricks. These are even more over the top tricks and every character has their own personal Uber tricks, which makes them feel really special and helps differentiate each character's personality. <laughs> With each uber trick you land, you earn a new letter in the word tricky. Earn all the letters in one run and you would get unlimited boost. So once again, SSX has this risk versus reward factor to the game. To the ignorant, doing tricks in a race would seem like a thing that slows you down, but doing tricks earns you boost and doing uber tricks earns you unlimited boosts, which means you can skip ramp jumps and zoom across the stage like a Sonic the Hedgehog speedrunner. You can earn unlimited boosts in certain courses very quickly, like Tokyo Megaplex with all of these airlifting fans lying around. So whether you want to do tricks for boosts or not, there's another way to earn boosts, and that's punching people in the face. Say goodnight. This gives you a full meter of boost and access to uber tricks. But as it turns out, people don't like being punched in the face. Who would have thought? So they eventually become your enemies. Boy fudge, what comes around, goes around. The fuck you say to me, you little shit? This is the new rival system in SSX Tricky. The more people you hit and run into, the more likely that person targets you in another race. Show off is a little different this time around. Instead of just giving you the basic course layout, they add in these ramps and rails to liven things up a little bit, especially in these mundane sections of the map. Since the controls are so much better in this game, this is a pure joy to play. Going through the alternative routes and mastering each course is such a thrill. It's easier to master courses as opposed to SSX because you actually have a restart option. Man, you really do take stuff like this for granted. We went from not being able to restart to literally restarting in seconds. The game in general loads really fast. It's funny to me because one of the main hooks for modern consoles is the loading speed, but doing anything in Tricky is almost instant. Hey, you want to restart? Bang, loads immediately. Hey, you want a tutorial? Bang, it loads immediately. Hey, you want to race? Bang, it loads almost immediately. This is a 20 year old game and it's just teabagging these new consoles. SSD, more like SS These nuts. <laughs> Earning medals leads to upgrades for your character and it's well worth it. Medals also unlock new characters and boards. Once again, there isn't really much new here. Once you've done the world circuit, which will take like two hours, you've seen practically everything that the game has to offer. Overall, Tricky is a damn good game, but I don't know how to judge it, to be honest. If we look at the game in a vacuum, it's a great fast paced downhill snowboarding game that gives off a sense of thrill like no other game. However, if we look at it as a sequel to SSX, the game is more approachable and easier to control, that's true, but it doesn't add much of anything new and the courses are all mostly the same. It feels more like an expansion pack rather than a sequel. Keep in mind though that Tricky's release was only one year after the first game, so they probably didn't have a lot of time. Happy 20th anniversary, by the way. Happy anniversary. There are some people who say Tricky isn't a sequel, so we shouldn't count it as one because the game is called Tricky and not two. What kind of sense does that make? I mean, if that's the case, then why is the third game called SSX3? You wanna know why? Because this is two. SSX3, if you turn it upside down, it looks like it says E-ass. Okay, I'll stop that joke. I'm sorry. Now this is what I expected out of a sequel because there's a change. Big change. Instead of picking a selection of one-off courses like in the past games, in this game, you're on a giant aggro crag that's made of snow and rock otherwise known as a mountain. This mountain is the main area of the game and everything is connected. Races and freestyle events, which are the show off events from the previous games. And the game is open world or 
uh, open mountain, rather. The mountain has three peaks that are all connected. Each peak has their own races and freestyle events. You can start at the top of the peak and race all the way to the bottom with no loading at all. The mountain is openly explorable and there are things to collect and challenges to do. And while you're doing these things, it's all covered by DJ Atomica to tell you what's going on. This is Radio Big. All right, I just got word the SSX competitors are heading into Peak One's Green Bay Station area. Things should be cranking up event-wise pretty quick. Unless, of course, they stop off at the lodge for some new gear or uh, go for a free ride. Must be nice, doing what you want, going where you please. You know, there are so many ways to ride and play around through this SSX circuit. Event organizers just sent out a text message giving the lowdown on how to advance up the mountain. Do yourself a favor and check it out. It makes it feel like what's going on here is actually something significant as opposed to just random events like the last games. I love the mountain concept and I'm really glad it was implemented. It piques my interest. Uh, all right, I'm not gonna put that shit joke in the video. It's done well, but there are some sacrifices that this concept naturally comes with. Since everything is connected, you don't have the imaginary courses with different venues. Courses like Aloha Ice Jam and Tokyo Megaplex are not a thing here because the mountain is just, well, a mountain. I'm definitely not saying these courses are badly designed. As a matter of fact, they're all a real blast to play, but they can all look a little, samey. The game in general is also very colorless at points, especially compared to Tricky. There's a lack of zany stuff that the previous two games had, but the game makes up for this with environmental changes that happen throughout the mountain. Blizzards, levels falling apart as you ride through them. Cannons that you grind on which shoot a cannonball through the wall that you eventually go through. A damn storm that happens and the lightning knocks down trees and you can grind on the trees that have been knocked down by the lightning. It's an insane ride. One more concern with free riding in the mountain is that you can't turn back. Fair enough, Enough, you're on a downhill mountain after all. But more often than not, you're traveling at absurd speeds, and there are times where you could just zip by the challenges. You have to reload where you last dropped off and hope you don't ride past it again. You can't select challenges any other way. I'm assuming because the game wants you to travel and explore as much as possible. Thankfully, the game loads really fast. The controls in SSX3 are, without a doubt, the very best in the series and now it's even easier to grind. Getting on a rail is no hassle, and even now you have these animations that show which way your character is leaning. This is the first time playing this series that I can say that it's my fault that I messed up and not the game's fault. And of course, grinding needed to be improved again because there's even more grinding in this game. So much grinding, it's Urban Meyer approved. The world circuit still revolves around races and freestyle events. You can still travel to these events by riding around or fast travel using this giant device that looks like a villain would use it to detonate a bomb in a movie. Oh, push the button! Yeah, come on, push your button! Races are the same shtick from before, but now you have these new things to play with. I mentioned the environmental changes that can happen throughout the course already, but now you have these super uber tricks. With each Uber trick you do, you unlock a letter that spells out Uber. Now, when this happens, you get 15% off your next ride. Not nah, just kidding, you unlock super Uber tricks. Super Uber tricks are even more insane over the top tricks that are, not to be redundant, insane. Drill! You even have Uber tricks while grinding now. Freestyle events are different now because freestyle events have their own unique course for the very first time. And courses can just be straight shots or grinding centric or could be a course where it's just one big jump and that's it. This is where you start to notice the new combo feature that's been added to the game. And also the new addition of manuals. Similar to the Tony Hawk games, manuals can help keep your combo going. Let me tell you, keeping your combo going while getting big air, doing Uber tricks, landing grind, Lines and whatnot all within the same combo is the coolest shit ever.
The only thing I don't like about freestyle events is that now you have the qualifying rounds bullshit, like the race events. If there's one thing that annoys me throughout this whole entire series, it's these qualifying rounds that force you to play the same thing three times. Like I get it with the first two games because there wasn't much content, but SSX3 has actual replayability and content this time around. There's no need to do this kind of thing anymore. When completing these events, you earn money, which you can spend in a store. You can buy cosmetics like this bag. What? $25,000? Well, I'm a Jets fan, I'll need one of those. Money is also now used to upgrade your character, so now you can upgrade them at your own pace, as opposed to being forced to do it in the previous two games. You can also buy Super Uber Tricks too, which is a welcomed addition. You're not just tied to the same couple of Super Uber Tricks. And the best thing of all, all the useless rider details are back too. What would I do if I didn't know Nate's favorite food was steak? I mean, how could I go on in life? SSX3 is such a welcomed addition and is definitely a full sequel. The mountain concept inherently comes with faults, but I think it's worth it to give us this new experience that still feels a little similar. That along with the other additions make SSX3 a real classic. As far as the series goes, there are these other spin-off games, but we'll get to those some other day. And there was also the 2012 reboot, which is super polarizing. But on to the title of the video. Was the SSX trilogy actually good? And it's hard to say. The first game laid the foundation down, but was such a disappointment in so many areas. The second game improves on that, but as a sequel, it could have been better. And I just told you how great 3 is, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. I put up a poll and a lot of you seem to agree that SSX3 is the best one. If they were to make a remaster of this series, they should handle it like that Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD collection where they only had Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1 and 3 and didn't include the second one because it would be pretty pointless. The first SSX game would be Budokai 2 in this scenario. But I can't say the trilogy is great. I, I just can't, man. It's good, but not great in my eyes. I still think the series had a ton of untapped potential, but we haven't heard anything from this series in almost 10 years now. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll never tell you to leave a like on the video, but I'm trying to make this the greatest YouTube channel in history, and leaving me a like helps along with that goal. But in any case, thanks again for watching.